wonderful viewers. You're welcome to your favorite podcast, Democracy Games. Today, we'll be discussing a very interesting topic. Guess what we are talking about today? Tech savvy citizenship. Yes, you guessed right. Tech savvy citizenship. Um, we have very interesting, young, vibrant people in the, in the room who will be discussing the topic with me. We have to my far right, Austin Ekujuru. Thank you for having me. One time this, one time that. <laughs> Aluta SUG, Digital Peace Builder. Yeah. Omo, you can explain what that means to us. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we also have our delectable Abidemi. Abidemi is very smart, always thinking in fast forward. You know those people that are always talking very fast. <laughs> you're wondering, how is your mind going? Is your mind going like typewriter or something like that? <laughs> I'm sure you'll find out as we start. We also have our guy, Cool Camp Collected, Chooks. Chooks Duru. You're welcome, sir. Chook is uh, um, an ed tech specialist. He's also a youth inclusion advocate. You're welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, you're welcome very much. Uh, we are happy to have you on the show. And we have our Miss World. Mm-hmm. You see? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have Miss World on the guests, uh, Miss Merit. Merit is a film for impact fellow. Merit believes in using film for social impact. Uh, welcome. And together, yeah, by the way, by the way, everybody here is a tech savvy person. So together we'll be doing justice to the topic tech savvy citizenship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so tech service citizenship. I think I'll start with mini, mini, money, more. Who are we starting with? I can start with the person by the way. You already know you're the person starting. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so you're, you're starting. <laughs> okay. So tech service citizenship. What do you think? What are the possibilities? How can technology help citizens? Is it even possible for technology to help citizens? Yeah, I would say that technology is something everyone should embrace it has really helped so far i'll use the advent of um, social media for example and the influence it played in the last elections that we had so it also um influenced a lot of youth i'll use myself as an example i also wasn't interested in the elective and the election process initially but because of the whole noise on social media and then the answers protests and all of that, that happened on social media, it also pushed me to also go out. I suffered, I saw complete shaking trying to get my <laughs> PVC, but still because of the rants and the rave on social media, it really pushed me. So of course, yes, technology can um, have a huge impact on the citizens and it's a go-to. I would always say it's a go-to for me, yes. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so um, just to build on what Evidemi said, I agree with her totally. But I look at it from a different. Um, I look at it from um, a different uh, angle or different lens. A different lens. So I look at from the how um, um, from the advantage and disadvantage of you know technology, yeah. you know, more especially with respect to elections and democracy in Nigeria. So um, first is that when you come to looking at it from the advantage uh, point of view you get to see that technology really played a lot in the past, you know, 10 decades. Um, sorry, a decade, sorry, yeah. not 10 decades, mm-hmm. a decade, you know, of our electoral process. <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Because first, it came with the advent of card readers, right? Mm-hmm. Second, we built on card readers to get the beavers, which is the bimodal voter uh, accreditation system. system. Yeah. Yeah. And from there, we also advanced into IREV. Yeah, so you could see how technology moved and how it was strengthening our electoral process right so we also had um you know form of a legislative process you know amending the electoral act so that that, there could be an electronic transmission of you know results from the IREV from the beavers you know to the IREV so that people can actually view in real time right so you can see that technology has played a lot of role but how do you look at it from the other side from the disadvantage point of view, you could see that people also leverage technology to be able to misinform people, yeah. issues of disinformation, mm-hmm. hate speech, dangerous you know, sharing of messages. But again, there's also another part that I want us to also pay critical <coughs> attention in this conversation is that I think that as a people, as a nation, 
we should take a step back to actually look at what happened in the last election or in the past you know elections that we've had how tech has also played key roles in those elections whether from the advantage point of view or from the disadvantage point of view but again it behoves on also these tech companies you know that their platforms we are used you know to disseminate some of all these you know misinformation hate speeches and all that so for me i'm looking at it from that point how do we begin to hold some of these tech platforms accountable Mm -hmm. to ensure that because the truth is that it is easy for you to leverage on technology leverage on social media to share information but retrieving that information when it is wrong becomes an issue so most of these tech companies are not actually paying attention towards employing more manpower to ensure that when uh, messages or posts are reported that is quickly you know um you know assessed if it is hate speech, you take it down. Do you get my point? Mm-hmm. So they begin to pay attention to that. And second to that is that how does also algorithm of you know these tech companies also aided in misinforming people and also sharing you know hate speeches? For an instance, when you are on a platform and you eventually click on a particular content, it begins to study your pattern. And you see that it keeps bringing up all those information, similar yeah, information, is, right? Yeah. So it behoves on us as a nation to ensure that we hold these tech companies accountable and ensure that all these toxic alg- algorithms are not at play in our own space, right? Mm-hmm. So that it, it so that it will help us in our electoral processes or democratic processes, we won't have issues of conflict. But in doing that, also we should also ensure that fundamental human rights of people, that freedom of expression, freedom of speech, you know, that ability to have uh, unrestricted information, timely and unrestricted information are also protected. That we want to check this doesn't mean that we should take away the right of people. Do you understand? We should also ensure that people have, you know, th- those fundamental rights of people are also protected. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> hmm. Do you really want to say something? Me? Okay, I like I like the angle both of them came from, yeah. The whole community mobilization angle and its disadvantage. And I also say until we start to until we begin to fact check information, mm-hmm. until we as individuals, we as um civilian citizens of Nigeria begin to fact check information. I like that. Um it, it too, like a few social media handles recently now post like fake news you see a screenshot and they're like fake news yes it's actually very very important as much as social media played um, a huge role when it comes to um, mobilizing people every content has an agenda mm-hmm. so that's why when you were talking about somehow you don't want to say let's regulate social media or stay near yeah, but <laughs> that's where you were going to, which mm. i am not a big fan of but then it's actually very cool because of the whole analytics and algorithm how they play out sometimes you can just say something and then this in the course because here picks it up and you open jumia you open google and you're seeing you know, all those it's, things it's, yeah they're everywhere yeah so regulating social media has its own place but i believe that um some of these agendas they are tools to suit a particular set of intellectual interest you get it can be used to perpetuate violence and um, push toxicity and history. just like what we saw in the Rono gist this year where mm-hmm. we saw Lagos election everybody were running behind the particular party mm-hmm. and after the first election the next one it became you are my neighbor before but now you are my enemy mm-hmm. all these agendas started on social media so all these things are agenda technology can be used to your advantage or, or to your disadvantage you just need to have sense and fact check whatever you are saying you don't just run with it and i believe that a lot of us that use social media are most people are educated until we start um educating ourselves individually it's just like religion culture and politics generally until you are well um, knowledgeable about what you believe in what you're running for whatever you see you'll be tossed to and right and left because you do not have a stand if you are not a thief before you saw money on the ground yeah, like you're not a thief and you suddenly like, no, who get this money? But if you are, you don't know if you're a thief or not. And then you see when you start thinking, should I take this money? Should I not take this money? That's because there's no identity. 
there's no surety. Mm -hmm. yeah, so until we are sure of who we are, um, we are educated, we are, not, we are well knowledgeable, we do away with um, religion, culture and all that, and then focus on our focus. I think mm -hmm. technology, <laughs> Technology would um, really, really be used because I'm big on community mobilization. Mm -hmm. Will really be used to our own advantage. No matter how you regulate social media, no matter how you push information, the good one. Who want to um, distort the mind of people will still distort, distort the mind of people. Except they themselves, they are intentional about what they feed on, about fact checking. Is it true? Should I run with it? About stereotypes and myths. So, so Merit, I will let, let me just quickly, you know, interject a bit. Yeah. So I, I don't also think that we as a people, mm -hmm. as Nigerians, we should um, leave the work only to government and to civil society to actually sure. educate people, right? Yeah. So I, I feel that there's another approach that we can take okay. because I was thinking about this earlier before, you know, we came on, on set. I was like, if we are very intentional about curbing misinformation and hate speech mm -hmm. on social media, we can do it. So, for an instance, we don't teach the ethics, right? So, if we teach, if we teach this, um, some of these ethics in school, even if it's a GST course, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ensure that students pass through this to understand because social media has come to stay. Yeah. And it's running at a very fast pace. So if you can be able to start educating people on how to be civil mm. on, on the social media platform, do you get? Yeah. They get to know it. So from school, they graduate into you. For an instance, okay, look at the National Press Council, for an instance. They have the ethics of the profession that guides yeah. them. Look at NBC, National Bro um, Broadcasting. Okay, okay, okay. They have ethics. Mm -hmm. But the social media is so open that nobody guides it. So how mm -hmm. do we ensure mm -hmm. that we begin to understand that the stakeholders, which is you and I, that play in that space, in that space. have a form of education on how to use it? Because the truth is that if you don't teach me and I get my way around it and begin to use social media, I'm the boss of my own. Right. I believe that I can post and share anything. These days, when I, I want to share something, I first of all look like I look three to four times over again to ensure the information. Even at times I don't even share. I can discuss it with you, but I don't share because I don't want to share any information that is not accurate mm -hmm. so that I don't misinform people. Do you get So I think we have a duty as a people to begin to teach this, both in the schools, in schools. both in the family, yeah. you know, so we have a duty. Because when parents don't understand that, you know, you have a responsibility, you know, to ensure whatever your children are seeing and what they post, it becomes a problem. You see, the, the society keeps going yeah. in that direction, feeling that, you know, it is right to post and share and it, everything. And we also forget that there are laws in place that also criminalizes some of all these things. Mm. Do you get? So not everybody knows that there is a, 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 a an act that is called the cyber crime. Cyber crime act, act, yeah. Right. So people go about doing what they. So we need a lot of sensitization, mm -hmm. and we need to start doing this thing in schools. Look at other. Look at other people in other countries. They begin to imbibe these values mm -hmm. on their children to be responsible online. I think, um, sorry, um, I think all the points everyone here has made is actually very profound. And we've touched on a couple of things, but I would want us to, you know, dial back a little and see technology from the point of view from which it is, it is actually very neutral. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, not positive, it's, it's not negative, negative. Yeah. it's very neutral. And the lack of this information is what makes um citizens um either stay oblivious of the facts of what it is and then have some other people experiment and okay. then find oh i could be good here i could be bad here which is why you'd have um everybody have um what we call um a persona on the internet um we have different avatars you know on your whatsapp you have a representation of who you are yeah on your LinkedIn is totally different. Mm -hmm. And for those people that now have OnlyFans account, it is another ball game altogether. <laughs> yeah. So um, 
when we as a people come to the realization that the internet is neutral then we can now approach it from the point of how do we go about education like you said uh, austin and um when you know we now know that okay it is neutral and it could be played in the right you know in the right wing or the left wing that's them um, the good and the bad right. then we now have to say okay we as the stakeholders who is in endangered by the influence of this and we have you know our children the gen z's and the mm -hmm. alphas and so the rest children no 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 yeah okay yes um Okay. I am I'm, I'm 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 thinking of it and I'm looking at this from um you want to take back that. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to take it back you have because to take it back, oh, because no. our children like the, I, I do not think No, no, no. I wasn't just looking okay. at the Gen Z. Gen Z I was like, looking at those, those younger than okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um okay. you said something about regulating social media in a way and then we have um laws around oh age 8, 13 for some of their platforms. But we have children age 8 on these platforms i'm not saying parents are not doing what they mm -hmm. are doing but some children being children will still find their way around yeah. trying to create accounts account. oh i have friends that are doing i have um you know my classmate or my senior is in it and he says it's fun let me just try stick mommy's phone and then create an account and then we had a case of i think some social media um viral videos of mm -hmm. some children that were naked yeah. and doing mm -hmm. certain things so if parents or nigerians as we all are citizens intellectual as we have agreed we are you know take cognizance of the fact that the internet is neutral then we cannot go you know we cannot approach it from okay, education you said um we need to do education and then it also makes me think what is our curriculum like from yeah, the education so point of view yeah. right everything the way the educational you know system is yes. in nigeria is structured to make us because come out of the yeah. society in a certain way forget about the even description like yeah. we have been okay i'm trying to be cautious but what we are being churned out to become as nigerians is you know we are consumers mm. we don't have things that make us you know think to um, become um, creators critical yeah critical yeah. thinkers leaders in certain Do points you know exactly yeah. so Without this in place, then you ca you cannot now come and say, oh, I want to regulate this. I want to. I'm like, ah, as long as the algorithm is favoring me, yeah. if I want to see a certain yeah. thing and I come online and I always see it, I will stay glued to it. It's so if if it doesn't favor me, I will delete the app and go somewhere else that will. That will so it all boils down to knowing what the internet is and then working around so, so education. I, I, I will just. Uh, no problem. Just, no, so I just want to say something. There is a report that I was reading few days back so it was done by uh, an international human rights organization so in that report they were looking how at how algorithms you know play out so they posed to be um, a 13 to 12 year old user registered i don't want to call the name of that platform so yeah registered on the platform so um they clicked on a particular thing the algorithm kept sending that account which is an underaged person in that country that it was registered, kept you know romanticizing yeah. issues around suicide, mental mm. health, and all those things, like making it look normal for the account user. So you see the danger that it is actually putting on the user, right? So that's why I'm saying that host countries, or for us as a people, not necessarily regulating social media, you know, just to make that clear, but we should go extra mile to ensure that tech companies take a responsibility with this. Because what that does is that when that when it is able to understand, you know, the content that is showing you and you are always there, it keeps showing you those contents and also keeps showing you adverts, right? So yeah. the tech companies are making money from you being on their platform. Yeah, the product. So yeah, so what yeah, the product because when it is free, you yourself becomes a product. Yes. So it makes you yeah. to be glued yes. on 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 the platform so you continue to view. So my my own take is that is that content because misinformation, disinformation, hate speech, dangerous uh, um speeches and all those things online 
we need to find a way to be able to curb it. Because one, it influences our elections, one way or the other, it impacts on our democracy. Hmm. Because when you look at peace and security, when you look at conflicts, it's mostly all these things. You see somebody will dig up something and just share it that it happened in this without verification. Before you know it has sparked, you know, one uh, conflict or the other in one place and another. But just to also respond to what you said, I think, you know, our, our yeah, you talked about curriculum and, uh, yeah, and I just want to say a few things about that. One is that I don't think that our educational system are beginning to pay attention to the skill that people need. So there is more like a, a skill mismatch, okay. you know, that you come out from the university and there is no job. Because in Africa, there's a statistic that says that 10 to 11, 12 million people go into the job market or the labor market every year. Mm -hmm. And there's about only 3 million available formal mm -hmm. jobs that are there. Mm -hmm. So you see, most times, most the, 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 the other people, the shortfall, we leverage on technology to create an employment for themselves. And that's where I'm going back to education. So when you don't train me on how to be civil on the internet, once I pick it up as a job, I start doing what I, what I like. You could see some people who are doing skill, uh, skits uh, making and content. Some are very violent kind of skits mm -hmm. yeah. and all that and dangerous skits. You can see some people doing a lot of things. That's because, one, there is no regulation. Yes, mm -hmm. we understand it's an open space, just like you yeah, said, you know, and all that. But at the same time, there should be a level of education to guide people, to yeah. make people understand how to be civil online. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, I just wanted to, for when it comes to regulation, Apart from the fact that um, I like I like Merit had mentioned, I'm not a big fan of the whole regulating mm. social media and has nothing to do with being Gen Z anyway. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I I believe I I know that for some platforms there are certain regulations such as um you know where they say you can report a particular comment mm. as hate speech. Yeah. You can report a particular comment as being violent. So I think those are very little um little standpoints we can start from. For most of us here, most of us that will be listening as well, you could just, if you see something that you know is violent, and then when it comes to algorithm, algorithm takes data. Yeah. So, for example, I go online, I'm searching how to um, cook beans, for example. You'll be surprised. I go on a particular platform, and I'm seeing several ways to make beans. I'm seeing videos about that because I've gone to search for that thing. Mm -hmm. So I do not think these algorithms just come from the sky or they just fall from somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's data that they are collecting from us. We are probably searching about it. And then something that Mary said, we might just be talking about something. Your speaker is already picking it. Your Google Assistant is already listening to it. If you're using an iPhone, Siri is listening to it. So a lot of all this um, technology in play. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big fan of technology because I like automated processes. Mm. I am a very lazy person. I like to identify as a lazy, hardworking person. <laughs> yes, but because technology has come to make life easier, it has made a lot of things automated. So I do not have to you know, do certain things. There are certain things I was doing before. Maybe I want to send um, an image or I want to send something and I'm thinking of how to, you know, print it out and all of that. So at least technology has brought all of this. In as much as I believe that social media or certain platforms should be regulated, I know that or I believe that some of these regulations are already in place on these platforms. So I just wanted to point that. Okay, for, for me, what I'm understanding from all of this here, and I actually like how we, the conversation has drawn a distinction Regulating social media would come from two angles. Regulating the activity of the tech companies who run social media. And regulating and the users. I'm, I'm not a fan of regulating how people use yeah. social yeah, media sure. because yeah. it's like regulating how we are talking. Okay. Yeah. It's not, it shouldn't be any business how yeah. I talk with you. But I feel like it's a two-way thing. How? It's a two-way thing, yeah? If we are going for regulate, reg regulating social media, then we should be regulating the both side. If you are under 18 or this uh, policy well, says under 13, and you are clicking this, it should not work. In, in relation to that, me, I'm also looking at it from a human rights perspective. We mm. have freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. That I have freedom of speech doesn't now mean I'll go. I, I know of a, well, of a truth that this guy is not a thief. 
I will not come and say he's a thief. And they say freedom after speech is not guaranteed. Exactly, yeah. but freedom. I have the freedom to say that thing. But will I now go and say something that is a lie? Then I should take responsibility for that. Yeah, you know, but tech companies should have, should be responsible for how they coordinate their affairs on the internet in our social space because they are there for profit mm -hmm. and i think that aspect should be regulated but for regulating how citizens use social, social media, media and all that mm -hmm. mm, i would think twice about that because of the human rights concern which now brings me also to the next question what are the practical means citizens can use technology to their advantage i like how you talked about how you were spoiled by social media to go and get mm -hmm. your pvc and all of that and then all the irf thing they could display they don't go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and all of that you know in this kind of for instance all that has happened mm -hmm. right and then citizens are where they are whether happy or satisfied or not i don't know you know but what are the practical steps in which citizens can take how can social media or technology aid citizens participate in a democracy mm. what are your thoughts on that first i i would like to um say that with technology mm -hmm. as regarding to democracy and the elections in nigeria um it's not a fair game mm. fair in the sense that um from high experience, you would see that, um, like I said earlier on, a lot of us, you know, just treat social media, you know, with ob oblivion, especially the older generations and those that are leaders in strategic positions, right? Until it's time for election, that's when it comes to play. And then they start looking for who is best in handling this, who understands the psychology of these users and how to play data. And then they bring these things to play and then me and you who just use twitter to rant and bant about manchester chelsea you know all of a sudden become very angry against you know towards each other and you know austin you know um you know let's say austin is is northern and i am southern okay. you know tomorrow i'm like i mean austin i used to chat man you chelsea and then i'm like you see this tomorrow we are now saying you're not from my side i'm not from your side mm. don't come here if i see you near my house you, you mm -hmm. get so that played out for I, I see i saw that play out this last election and that has fizzled out and now we are back to we are back to you know being friends and <laughs> it will still play out again exactly you know which is why i said you know with democracy and um, technology it's not a fair game and if we come to the realization like, as i said earlier on that technology in itself is neutral then we should start looking to create things like um digital culture for nigerians mm. not from mm. not just mm. from the government's point of view but mm. from our own point, point of, of view, view to protect ourselves because if we create such a digital culture where we can now say okay who and who understands social media understands facebook understands tiktok understands um how to use google <laughs> right you know yeah. can you create um learning materials for the young ones for ourselves such so that you know when somebody comes and is you know, doing something nasty. Um, someone comes and creates a, 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 a phishing website and says that, and, and creates maybe a, a, what do they call these things? Um, fake eye or, you know, these things where they dub people's faces yeah. and then, you know, say this person said this. And, you know, I don't come and say, ah, it's true and then retweet. First, I have to digest it, ask around. So we need to create a culture where we we're enlightened first and foremost mm -hmm. before we can now say, okay, when this, you know, this wave comes again in the next four yeah. years, we're not like, we know your tricks. Yeah. We will not fall for it. Mm -hmm. And um, one, one way I have seen this play out is with um, parents, but a lot of people don't know this. Um, parents can, with their phones, track the activities of their, children, their children, right? Yes. right? Yep. Um, there, are, there are new control techniques that you have where such so that before your child can download an application, he requests to download, it comes to your device as a parent and you're, you review, oh, what's this app? What's the impact? If it's not something I want my child to have, delete, mm -hmm. I deny the request. But most Nigerian parents don't know don't these know things, that. right? And, yeah, it, and then um, I think some other countries have started doing things like, um, which she said part of the regulation is, um, what did they call it again? Screen, screen time, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, for kids under 18, they should have screen time. 
so that they don't become the data that these people use to, you know, um, redefine, I be um, refine and then use against us. So I think that's like the angle I I I would look at um, this from. So for me, I would say that when it comes to technology and Nigeria, for a country that boast of a lot of tech bros and taxis, we are not there yet. To be honest, especially when it comes to our democratic process, okay. mm. with a lot of things we are actually using technology. For example, I'll use people that used to sell recharge cards mm. before. Now, I can't remember the last time I bought a recharge card. I've not bought a recharge card like I went to the roadside and buy a recharge card in a very long while. Mm. Because now we have mobile apps that could do all of that. Mm. We have our USSD codes that could do all of that because of technology. But I would say for the te democratic process in Nigeria, we are not there yet. But citizens, we are using technology. We are using it. We are going to the ATM stands, withdrawing our money. We don't have to queue in those long queues at the bank because of technology have made all of these things easier. So first, I would say that technology has made life easier for citizens. Technology has made life easier for us to also have readily available information. We don't have to go to the library. I don't even know if you have a library. Even though like for people that like hard copy books, mm. I actually still like hard copy books, mm. but you do not have to, you know, travel a far distance yeah. to go yeah. to a particular library because you have this information readily accessible to us. So but even with that, it still comes back to the misinformation he's talking about. Yeah. So I would say that as citizens, we are using yeah. technology. But for our democratic process in Nigeria, we are not there yet because it should make the democratic process more transparent than it already is. What are the possibilities so, from a citizen perspective? How can citizens use demo, uh, technology, technology okay. to their advantage in a democracy? Oh, okay. Yeah, so I would like for, for first, for example, what I said, um, we can use social media, that's one, when it comes to technology. So we can use social media to our advantage by, you know, speaking out, becoming a thought leader on a particular process. Okay. And like he also mentioned, you know, those um, violence clashes and all of that on social media. If we all decide to okay. use social media to our advantage by posting, you know, fact-checking and also being open, keeping yeah. an open mind, I might not agree with what Austin is saying, True. but it doesn't mean what he's saying is rubbish. Yeah. So by all each, each of us having an open mind, that's one, and ensuring that we know what we are posting not just spreading fake news because sometimes mm. look at that COVID-19 time or is it Ebola that they said everybody should go and start back in the yes, <laughs> exactly yes, yes. because one person said it and people are already calling so fact checking is one we should also make sure that what we are posting on social media we should fact check misinformation and keeping an open mind that's what I'm going to say and I'll also say before we even get to this point where we are fact checking and all that we have to be interested mm. Mm. so because a lot of us here we are um I would say, I don't use the word learned, let's say in the civic space. No, learned is for exclusive fellows who have gone to law school. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. okay. So I think because we are in the civic space and we've decided to embrace our civic responsibility, that is mm. why it's sounding so nice mm. in mm. our ear. Mm. He mentioned, I loved how he talked about um you the psychological aspect of technology. I will look at Twitter, look at all the platforms, and I'll say, you, you know how to use this platform very well. Go mm -hmm. there. Every I'll still remain, I'll still say every content you see on social media has an agenda. Yeah. If you like, so until even the tech, you said um the first thing you said before you said uh, in our democratic space, we're not there yet. That for a country that has a lot of tech, tech rules and taxes, we are actually there. But are those tech rules and taxes interested in these things you are saying? I don't think they you are. You had better be interested in our to, democracy. Exactly, they had better, but they, had they better, are not. But they they are just not. want to make money. And leave the so country. Until in, and leave the country. Uh, until when, when the country until, is not, is not, I'm giving that's, them. That's what I'm telling you. Let me play you. Individually, we begin to embrace our civic responsibilities. Until me, as a creative, I know that I don't have to hold a microphone in front of 1,000 people to push for social change, to facilitate social change. Mm -hmm. I can start with the one person in my compound. Mm -hmm. I can start with that young boy. Then we cannot see this change. A lot of mm -hmm. us want state. A lot of us want the social media platform. No. A lot of people in Zuba community are not on social media. Maybe they're on Facebook to post pictures. Mm -hmm. You get? So, door to door, your next door neighbor, your younger ones. The secondary school close to your house that you teach as a primary two teacher, as a just one teacher, mm -hmm. until we start creating impact from there, then I don't think we, I have a project on fact checking. I, we discussed about that before this project. It's actually January to March, and we are going around schools in the FCT, teaching, um, empowering young students with knowledge skills. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to fact check information to mm. dispel this information. That's the mm. whole project is enhancing civic literacy. Mm. But yes, are all those kids in school? What about the ones that have left secondary school? Mm. So until we are so intentional about telling everybody around us, mm. this is how we should be. This is how to get it. I don't think we can be there. 
we've mentioned fact checking you've mentioned um what was the other uh, education, education yeah. Yeah. civic education what are the other possibilities that you want to add to this uh, final yeah, thoughts mentioned embracing your civic embracing your yeah, civic yeah. responsibility so, so i think i think my colleagues you know on this um on this conversation they've actually touched into everything but um i just still feel that as a people we need to be intentional just like you know mm -hmm. merit said you know in her closing statement we need to be intentional and uh, i think we've leveraged on social media for a lot of you know for at least there is a lot of improvement with respect to participation in elections and democratic processes for instance we've seen that um, during elections and all that we leverage on um, twitter which which is now x now Mm -hmm. Twitter space conversations and we also see that most times hashtags also draw the attention of government yeah. you mm -hmm. understand so yes. when you put up a hashtag and everybody's talking about their you know authorities will now look at it and know that oh this is of great mm -hmm. importance for an instance is that when we when uh, citizens also used it for the NSAS protest mm -hmm. even recently during the death of Mubad as well mm -hmm. yeah you they use that, it to organize yeah. so you see that media and activism component of, of, it, of yeah. it you know so to be able to organize and aggregate people so i think that there's a lot of you know possibilities, yeah, possibilities and a lot of you know you know I, um, work that citizens have used you know with respect to using technology to advance democratic processes and even our Election yeah, sorry, just to add one more. Um, the petition change it thing. I, I think you also had a lot to play when it comes to the mental mm -hmm. health bill that was eventually okay. passed yeah. to law. So those petitions as well have also I think as much as we look at it as oh, they're always telling us come and sign one petition, but sometimes mm -hmm. it actually has and it goes a long way. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another possibility. Well, awareness, so, yes. that's creating awareness. Yeah. Another thing to add um is um community building. You know, community building built on trust mm -hmm. because um, we saw what happened with NSAS. Um, we didn't have, you know, the Nigerian youth did not have leaders. And, you know, at some point when, you know, the psychological play came in mm -hmm. with a lot of things because we did not have trust and we did not have communities that, yeah. you know, had been built before this time and before mm -hmm. the elections, you know, it's really hard to now say, you know that we are united on one front and so mm -hmm. once we have trust and community and then you know the digital culture for nigeria that we can mentally f you know work with i think you know these things would help us well can i just yeah. say please one please step? please go ahead is this saying that say, if you want to catch thief you, you guys behave like a thief mm. Mm. you get so people that um the corrupt persons that push some certain narratives on social media to distort the democratic process in nigeria they are actually very organized Mm -hmm. they, know, they know what they would put out no, and it would cost wahala yeah. the same way civil society organizations uh whole organizations and persons that stand for democracy need to learn to put out their own agenda on like you said technology is a neutral space nobody owns it. you can put anything mm -hmm. as as much as we are um, pushing for let's regulate some kind of stuff here you say if you guys organize and be loud about so, it. Exactly. Mm. So, loud, if, 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 loud, loud, loud. You cannot be for me righteous and mm. call five persons. I lost a friend in Abuja a few months ago. Mm. Yes, I was in for the whole, let's go and protest, let's go and protest. But some HR persons in Abuja were like, no, let's do it the calm way. I was like, fine, no, oh yeah. Who is ready to go on social media? And you mm. get like 150 persons posting at the same time. <laughs> and the gist went to Senate. I'm sure a lot of you heard about mm. um, the, the whole matter. It was a WhatsApp group matter. So if we too want to push for and um, push the whole civic education messages or democracy we we don't have to stay so calm about it and say and eh, because we don't want to see i don't understand the same way your opponents are going rugged you have to go rugged too Let's go if, rugged. Not, if they are louder than you we buy their message mm -hmm. storytelling like i always mm -hmm. say whatever people see here and talk about has great impact in their mind so they should see here and talk about your own story mm -hmm. not your opponent's story like, oh, you go ahead. Ahead. <laughs> ah, ah, I wish we can continue this this conversation. You know, I I hate coming to this part of the show where we have to say goodbye. goodbye. But goodbye. you know, people, you know, let's let me tell you something. As you're using social media as a responsible citizen, always remember to fact check. Always remember to educate. You know, be civic and responsible online. Let's organize. Let's organize. Let's organize for Nigeria. Let's create awareness on the issues that concern us. Let's build a 
trust community. Let's build this community of Nigerians uh, online that is based on trust. Trust. And most of all, let's go rugged for Nigeria. See, it's our country and we need to save this country. The people that are going against us, like Merit says, they are going loud and rugged and we need to go louder than them. Mm -hmm. You know, in, if you want to learn more about this, how to be a tech service citizen and how to use technology to your advantage in a democracy, look, click on our website, take these courses. I promise you these courses are going to help you. Let's take the courses. Let's get certified. Get your certificate do you know that the certificate is uh, recognized by the fcdo who are our sponsors yes the british uh, fcdo the certificate is recognized by them so let's take this course and get certified and let's build the nigeria that we can call our own and how and much is this um, it's free it's free guys it's free together we can build the nigerian dream man. so let us flex and chill in nigeria okay. no need to jackpot no, jack no, no, <laughs> no need to jackpot man thank you so much for staying to, to your favorite uh, podcast democracy games see you again next week until then i'm your favorite host og and bye bye